Instead of reusing one of their former main antagonists, Capcom decided to make a brand new bad guy for Street Fighter VI. The result was the widely mysterious and particularly intriguing JP, an old cane-wielding man who uses psycho power to manifest portals out of which vicious ghosts, jagged spikes, or he himself can emerge. For months, we saw just snippets of JP and were left to speculate on his backstory, personality, evil goals for world domination, and connections to M. Bison. But now that Street Fighter VI is out, we have at least a few canonical answers that can help us flesh out the larger identity of the franchise's latest big boss. We're sharing everything we've learned about the character here in our full story of JP in Street Fighter VI. If you find this video informative or entertaining, please like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, now observe. In a previous video, we speculated on JP's potential connections to M. Bison because Bison is the only true available source of psychopower in the Street Fighter universe currently. Other characters have been imbued with it, yes, but only because they're clones of Bison. We find in the evil dictator's backstory that he was one of just three students under a master who was the only person, at the time, to be able to wield psycho power successfully. Though we know he killed his master after learning the ways of said power, we have almost no information on Bison's peers, identities, or their whereabouts in modern times, so JP being one of them was our leading theory. As it turns out, this isn't what happened. Playing through Street Fighter VI's single player modes reveals that JP was simply the head financial advisor for Bison's evil crime organization, Shadaloo. He simply notes that he wanted to see the world through the same lens as Bison. We presume Bison must have given JP the psycho power in some capacity, but we don't have any details on the interaction. After Bison's death and Shadaloo's downfall at the end of Street Fighter V, JP ventured out into the world conducting financial businesses under multiple monikers such as Johan Petrovich and Jean-Philippe, always maintaining the JP name format, which, if you hadn't already noticed, seems to be a clear reference to the real-life figure JP Morgan, the American financier and investment banker who dominated corporate finance on Wall Street throughout the Gilded Age. Morgan is known as one of history's greatest bankers, which can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on whom you ask. Though he actively participated in many philanthropic endeavors with his fortune, Morgan is also criticized for using his vast power and influence to manipulate social and political happenings for his own benefits. Also, here's a picture of him whapping a photographer with his cane. Flash forward to the events leading up to Street Fighter VI that were nicely articulated in the four-issue Days of the Eclipse comic series by Udon. JP has become the head of an international non-governmental organization responsible for many successful investment projects. Said organization is a non-profit called the Terra Network Partners and is most recently in the news for having afforded prosperity to the fictional country of Nashal. Also, it's the public front for a terrorist group known as Amnesia, but more on that later. In issue one of Days of the Eclipse, we meet JP in Nashal as he and his organization have set up a world fighting tournament under the premise that it will benefit the people and the culture of the country. He gets Ken Masters to donate millions of dollars in funding for the tournament via the Masters Foundation and invites Ken to Nashal to check out the tourney grounds before it officially kicks off. Some of the locals have realized nefarious actors are afoot, however, and violent protests have broken out as a result. Ken and his advisor, Albert Jackson, who also happens to be Kimberly's uncle, are attacked in their car when leaving the tournament grounds. Albert is killed and Ken is wounded. It's at this time that hacktivist terrorist group Amnesia make themselves known to the public via a massive anonymous broadcast. They create a fake video portraying Ken as their partner and main source of funding, saying that he paid them off to create chaos so that he could make a profit via some fraudulent transactions via cryptocurrency to benefit the Masters Foundation ultimately at the cost of Nashal's destabilization. Of course, it's really JP behind all this, and he visits Ken, who is now on the lam, to tell him as much. JP shows Ken that Amnesia has abducted his son Mel, and that Ken's phone has been rigged to become the detonator for multiple drone bombs that have been set around town, one of which is next to Mel. Ken is forced to choose to either allow Mel's bomb to explode or to stop it by detonating a myriad of others around town, which Ken ultimately reluctantly does. JP strolls away as Luke and the police arrive just in time to see Ken fleeing from the scene. He's able to escape only because JP's assistant, Kalima, who has been suspicious of JP for some time, comes in and escorts him to safety. She explains that she realized JP is aiming to use the tournament as a means to launder money, and Ken decides to infiltrate the event to confront JP and to save his son. 
He does so, but is confronted by Luke and JP slips away. Kalima catches up with JP and attempts to stab him, but the old man turns the blade on her and reveals that he's also set up a system of online betting for the tournament that Nashal's economy is now dependent on. If she stops the tournament from continuing, Nashal will fall apart. That leads us into the main story for Street Fighter VI, so that means spoilers for both World Tour and Arcade modes from here on out. In his arcade sequence, JP speaks in an inner monologue about how he is indeed using the tournament to launder money, but that it's had an unfortunate effect of attracting formidable potential foes as well. Kimberly then approaches, asking about the events that led to her uncle's death, but JP defeats her without giving an answer. The events of World Tour mode see the tournament actually come to fruition and are told through the eyes of the player's avatar and their friendly rival, Bosch. Bosch is a member of the Nashal Resistance Group and hatches a plan to kill JP. Said plan involves planting a homemade bomb in the tournament belt, winning the tournament, and then activating the bomb at the awards ceremony when JP presents the belt to him, kamikaze killing both him and the evil villain. JP finds out about this plot due to the carelessness of the player, who actually puts the bomb together for Bosch, and then thwarts the plan by starting the timer and then handing the belt off to Bosch's little child sister, who happens to be one of the dancers at the tournament. Bosch rushes the stage to save his sister, but dies as the bomb explodes and kills really only him. JP and the player avatar then fight as the attending crowd flees in chaos, and the latter wins. A defeated JP survives and scoffs at the idea that the player has accomplished anything. The credits then roll. Not the most satisfying of endings, but there is a little more to the character to explore, at least in concept. The pursuit of strength has long been a theme in Street Fighter, as many characters such as Ryu, Akuma, and M. Bison have seen it as a means of attaining their goals. The good characters use strength in the pursuit of balance, while the evil ones tend to use it to pursue power. JP repeatedly denounces strength in his dealings with the player during World Tour, ultimately seeing it as a costly and ineffective means to power, likening it to a cat that chases and eventually eats its own tail. JP pursues power instead through deception and duplicity. Instead of trying to affect his will on the others by force, he chooses to manipulate and expropriate the goodness of people for his own selfish ends. We see this theme of duplicity frequently in the character as he goes by multiple names and speaks in multiple accents. Note the way Capcom designed his name in his presentation graphics so that it can be inverted and still depict the exact same thing. JP represents a contrasting philosophy to the one Street Fighter has used, more or less, since day one, for better or worse, and ultimately brings a sense of nihilism to the engine that's propelled so many of the franchise's main characters. This is an interesting idea that hits the foundations of the franchise, but we still think it would have been better if JP were one of Bison's peers instead of some random Shadaloo accountant with zero setup prior to SF6. But what do you think of this new big baddie now that we know all that we do about his story? Do you think he's well made and well executed? Do you hope to see him appear in future Street Fighter games? Share your thoughts on JP in the comments below, and if you'd like to see more character story explorations like this, we have an entire playlist of videos waiting for you. I've been John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.